to a final face-off. Do we have any questions before we begin the final round? Then let us begin. Math, short answer. Starting at t equals zero and with no initial velocity, a vehicle traveling in a straight line accelerates at 6t meters per second squared. In meters, how far has the vehicle traveled in the first two seconds? B2. Um, 36 meters. In incorrect. Team A. A, Captain. 8 meters? That is correct. Four points, Team A. Bonus, math, short answer. On what interval is f of x is the function f of x equals the integral from 0 to x of the expression 1 minus t dt increasing? 1 minus t? Five seconds. From zero to infinity? Incorrect. The answer is uh, negative infinity, comma one. Toss up biology, multiple choice. Which of the following is the most commonly accepted explanation for the adaptive advantage of bacterial restriction enzymes? W, protection against viral infection. Interrupt B, Captain. W. Correct, four points, team B. Bonus, biology, multiple choice. Which of the following would most likely be a restriction enzyme recognition site? W, C, G, G, T, A, C. X, T, A, T, G, C, A. Y, A, T, A, C, G, C. Z, G, A, A, T, T, C. Where is it calling from me? I, I don't know. That's one of the yeah. Or is it G, C, G, like the one with three G? Z. That is correct. Ten points, Team B. Toss up, physics, multiple choice. Which of the following is the best explanation of entanglement in quantum mechanics? W. All events in a local system are linked. X. No two particles, particles can occupy the same quantum state. Y. Compton scattering. Z. Uh, interrupt B3. Z. Correct. Four points, team B. Bonus, physics, multiple choice. Which of the following is, the most, consist is most consistent with the principle of complementarity according to the Hopen Ho Copenhagen interpretation? W. No quantum event is local. X. Energy and matter are interchangeable. Y. A quantum particle can manifest itself as either a wave or particle, but not both simultaneously. Z. There are hidden variables that complement and explain the illusion of the indeterminate nature of the quantum world. Okay, what do you guys think? Why is it not why? Why is it not I don't know. Give me some time. Five seconds. Why? Correct. Ten points, team B. Toss up. Chemistry. Short answer. What is the Van Hoff? Factor for a non electrolyte such as sucrose? B1. 1. Correct. 4 points, team B. Bonus, chemistry, short answer. A glucose solution has an, has an osmotic pressure of 30.0 atmospheres at 300 K. To the first decimal place, what is the molarity of the solution? 30 over 24. Yeah. The first decimal place. 5.25. 1.25. The first decimal place. 1.3. 1.3. That is correct. 10 points, team B. Toss up. Math, multiple choice. The theorem of Papus is used to, t to calculate the volume of a solid of revolution generated by rotating a plane figure about an external axis. To apply the theorem, the area of the figure must be known and what other quantity? W. The figure's minimum distance to the axis. X, the figure's maximum distance to the axis. Y, the figure's centroid distance to the interrupt A, Captain. Z, incorrect, four points, team B. I'll repeat it. Math, multiple choice. The theorem of Papus is used to calculate the volume of a solid of revolution generated by rotating a plane figure about an external axis. To apply the theorem, the area of the figure must be known and what other quantity? W, the figure's minimum distance to the axis. X, the figure's maximum distance to the axis. Y, the figure's centroid distance to the axis. Z, the figure's arc length. B1, X. Incorrect. The answer is Y. Toss up. General science, multiple choice. Uh, Which? Me clear. General science, multiple choice. 
Which of the following instruments was used to first detect the cosmic microwave background radiation? W. Space-based infrared spe spectrometer. X. Ground-based infrared spectrometer. Y. Ground-based radio in interrupt uh, A captain. Y. Correct. Four points, team A. Bonus. General science. Short answer. Name all of the following four fabrics that will soften and or dissolve when exposed to nail polish remover. Acetate, wool, rami, silk. Five seconds. Silk and acetate? Incorrect. Just acetate. Toss up. Earth science, multiple choice. Which of the following is one of the most important characteristics for a group of fish called lobed fin fish that lived during the Devonian period? W. They were able to turn a portion of their stomachs out through their mouth and thus digest food outside their bodies. X. They had a shell-like covering that rigidly stood up into seafloor sed sediment. Y. They had a three-chambered heart and no swim bladder. Z. They began to adapt to terrestrial environments. Uh, B2. Z. Correct. Four points, team B. Bonus Earth Science Multiple Choice. Which of the following is closest to the date of when the Earth is farthest from the Sun in 2010? W. Summer solstice. X. Winter solstice. Y. March 20th. Z. July 4th. Are you 100% sure? It's a W, X, Y, Z, right? I can get W. W. Incorrect. The answer is Z. Uh, you'd like to challenge that? Uh, okay. Stop, stop. The answer is correct. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. What? All right. Absolutely correct. Okay. <laughs> um, let's uh, continue. Toss up chemistry multiple choice. Esters are produced from the reaction of W, water and alcohols. X, alcohols and carboxylic interrupt B, captain. X. Correct. Four points, team B. Bonus, chemistry, short answer. Find the change in enthalpy in kilojoules for the following reaction. 2H2 gas plus O2 gas yields 2H2O gas. Assume the bond energy of the HH, uh, OO, and OH bonds are 400... 435, 500, and 460 kilojoules per mole, respectively. Five seconds. What is it? Positive 75. Positive 75. Incorrect. The answer is negative 470. Toss up. Biology multiple choice. Which of the following best describes the density gradient centrifugation? W. Using a high-speed centrifuge to remove substances of different densities. Interrupt A1. W. Incorrect. Four points to team B. I'll repeat it. Biology multiple choice. Which of the following best describes density gradient centrifugation? W. Using a high-speed centrifuge to remove substances of different densities. X. Adding a self-actionate to a dense solution, such as glycerol, and centrifuging at high speed for hours. Why? Centrifuging different density media in different tubes to find their relative densities. Z. Removing various density solutes by centrifuging at very high speed for many hours. Uh, B, Captain. Z. Incorrect. The answer is X. Game. That finishes the first half. Two minute break. Toss up physics, multiple choice. The Dirac equation is compatible with the principles of W. Quantum mechanics only. X. Special relativity only. Y, general relativity only. Interrupt A, Captain. Z, correct. Four points, Team A. Bonus, physics, short answer. By words or number, name all of the following four choices that are characteristics of three-phase electric induction motors when compared to single-phase electric motors if both motors are rated at 7.5 horsepower. One, less compact. Two, more efficient. Three, lower vibration. Four, higher starting torque. Uh, more efficient. Less compact, more efficient. Low vibration, high starting torque. Three compared to one. Five seconds. Two and three. Incorrect. Two, three, and four. Toss up. Astronomy, multiple choice. 
Which of the following was the technique used to measure the mass of Sagittarius A star by the Max Planck Institute? W. Flux of X-ray emissions. X. Redshift of the local group. Y. Speed and in, uh, interrupt B2. Y. Correct. Four points, team B. Bonus. Astronomy. Multiple choice. Which of the following is most likely true? W. General relativity breaks down at very high temperatures. X. The inflationary phase of the universe occurred after the first stars formed. Y. String theory successfully predicts the unification of all forces at high temperatures. Z. Small variations in the cosmic microwave background are inconsistent with the Big Bang theory. Yeah. No, if it's no, because they have an inflation theory. Okay, so what is it? Yeah. The general relativity, general relativity breaks um, down as you approach the high temperatures. temperatures. Uh, okay, W. Um, okay, we're going down. W. Correct. Ten points, team B. Toss up. Earth science, multiple choice. Most of the world's desert and steppe climates are located closest to which of the following? W. The poleward edge of the feral cell. X. The poleward edge of the Hadley cell. Y. The equator. Z. The poles. B1. X. Correct. Four points, team B. Bonus. Earth science, multiple choice. The upper level winds in the Hadley cell over the northern hemisphere generally flows in which of the following directions? W, northwesterly. X, southwesterly. Y, northeasterly. Z, southeasterly. Upper have heavy feral. Okay, so like at 30 degrees uh, okay. latitude, it goes around like this. So, uh, south, northwesterly. Make sure it's not south. I'm not totally sure. It goes towards the equator. Five seconds. X. That is correct. Ten, ten points, team B. Toss up, general science, multiple choice. When measuring the percent transmittance of a test solution with a spectrophotometer, such as a SPEC-20, which of the following types of cuvettes would be best for measurements at wavelengths of 360 nanometers? W, plastic. X, borosilicate. Y, aluminum. Z, fused quartz. A, Captain. Y, incorrect. B1. X. Incorrect. The answer is Z. Toss-up. Astronomy. Short answer. Spin flip causes 21 centimeter emission from interstellar hydrogen at the atomic level. Name two of the following four choices that the spin flip is caused by. Electron spin, proton spin, neutron spin, positron spin. Uh, a, Captain. One and three. Uh, that is incorrect. B2. One and four. Uh, that is incorrect. This is electron spin and proton spin. Toss up chemistry. Clear, Toss up chemistry. Short answer. What is the name of the group or bond formed when the hydroxyl group of carbon five of D glucose in its open chain form reacts with the same molecules aldehydes group? B captain. Glycosidic linkage. Incorrect. Time. Uh, after the time. The answer is hemiacetyl. Toss up, biology, multiple choice. Which of the following occurs in the sliding filament mechanism of striated muscle during muscle contraction? W. The length of the A band remains constant and the length of the sarcomere can only decrease. X. The length of the A band decreases and the length of the sarcomere can decrease or increase. Y. The length of the A band decreases and the length of the sarcomere remains constant. Z. The length of the A band decreases and the length of the sarcomere decreases. A2. X. Incorrect. B, Captain. Z. Incorrect. The answer is W. Toss up. Physics, multiple choice. Which of the following experimental findings was one of the first to strongly support the existence of the quantum property of electron spin? W. Splitting of spectral lines of elements. X. Cathode ray deflection by magnetic fields. Y. The integer value of electron charge. Interrupt, A, Captain. Z. Incorrect. That's four points to team B. I'll repeat it. Physics, multiple choice. Which of the following experimental findings was one of the first to strongly support the existence of the quantum property of electron spin? W. Splitting of spectral lines of elements. X. Cathode ray deflection by magnetic fields. Y. The integer value of electron charge. Z. The discovery of the positron. B1. W. Correct. Four points to team B. Bonus, physics, short answer. By words or number, name all of the following three choices that have yet to be detected experimentally. One, magnetic monopole. Two, Bose-Einstein condensate. Three, gravitational waves. Uh, we have done 
gravitational waves. It's just the first one. We, we have, yeah. We, oh, wait, wait, wait. Should I, should I JC? Should I JC you? No, I'm so sure because they have a big thing on the Caltech. Just one? It's just the first one on all the yeah. Are, are you, like, pretty sure about I'm that? I'm so sure. Okay, I know okay, gravity okay, waves. Okay, okay. Are cool. The first one. Incorrect. The first and the third. What? Challenge. Okay, stop. Oh. <clears throat> Is it a challenge? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure they've um, detected gravity waves from like rotating binary pulsars, and so we, it ha they have been detected experimentally. Uh, we don't have a confirmed detection that, that's reproduced and accepted. Your, your coach will explain why you're wrong later. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, don't change. Uh, they, uh, it's challenge is over. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Toss up Earth science, multiple choice. Most of the meteorites that strike Earth are which of the following types? W, pure iron. X, iron nickel. Interrupt B1. X. Incorrect. Four points as he may. I'll repeat it. Earth science, multiple choice. Most of the meteorites that strike Earth are which of the following types? W, pure iron. X, iron nickel. Y, chondrites. Z, achondrites. A, captain. Y. Correct. Four points as he may. Bonus, earth science, multiple choice. Which of the following is not part of the Milankovitch theory for the triggering mechanisms of glacial, interglacial climatic events of the Pleistocene. W, lunar libration. X, Earth's orbital eccentricity. Y, precession of the equinoxes. Z, angle between Earth's axis and a line perpendicular to the plane of its orbit around the sun. Y, incorrect, the answer is W. Toss up, math, short answer. How many of the following four functions are odd functions? Cosine 3x, natural log x, e to the x, e to the x cubed. A, Captain. Cosine 3x? Incorrect. B1. None of them. That is correct. Four points, Team B. Bonus, math, short answer. Two squares are placed next to each other to form a rectangle. What is the ratio of the length of the diagonal of the rectangle to the length of the, of the diagonal of one of the squares? Root 3 over 2? Root 3 over root 2? So that's just 5. Why is it root 5? It's 2 in length. 2 in length. Okay, so square root of root 5. Okay. Over 2? Square root of 5 halves. Uh, that is correct. 10 points, TMB. <laughs> and we have the winners, North Hollywood High School. A spectacular comeback. As dramatic as their previous defeat, North Hollywood rallied and will now move on to compete in the Department of Energy's 2010 National Science Bowl in Washington, D.C. For more information on the LAEWP Science Bowl and other education programs sponsored by the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power, log on to www.ladwp.com and click on Community Involvement and then LADWP in the school. Experts say Los Angeles will one day be hit with the big one, a major high-magnitude earthquake which will come with no warning and leave a huge impact. Hundreds or even thousands dead and injured, and billions of dollars in damage. 
It's a question of not if, but when such a quake will strike LA. Are we prepared? Are you prepared? To help answer those questions, the city took part in Golden Guardian, a week-long series of statewide exercises designed to test our ability to deal with a catastrophic natural disaster or terrorist attack. On November 13th, the shakeout drill was held, a simulated 7.8 earthquake, and all more than 5 million people took part statewide. Here at Bishop Alamany High School in Mission Hills, 300 students volunteered to act as victims of the quake, and they really got into character. I'm burning my face, and I have a bruise on my arm, my uh, wrist right here. You can see on my hand. I have a burn injury, well, kind of a burn, more gruesome than a burn, normal burn. Then I have a scratch on my cheek and a head gash, so I'm a little messed up right now. <laughs> At 10 a.m., Bishop Alamany students joined thousands of other people throughout the city and millions statewide and reacted to a simulated 7.8 earthquake. These young people did what they've been taught to do when a quake hits. They got under their desks to write things out. In this exercise, the quake lasted a full two minutes. After the rumbling had stopped, they made their way through smoke-filled halls to a predetermined meeting area outside. Mark? Yeah. Okay. Jonathan? Yeah. Students, I should not hear a word until we have roll taken. We got through search and rescue, not a word. Of course, in a real quake, many of these students would be hurt. So in this exercise, the injured were taken to the school's football field, be evaluated, and then transferred to nearby Providence Holy Cross Medical Center to be treated. At a news conference here, Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger talked about why Golden Guardian is so important to all Californians. It's one thing uh, to talk about uh, being ready for emergency, but it's another thing to actually test it and practice it and really see each year where the shortcomings are and then to correct the shortcomings. That's what this exercise is all about. Los Angeles Mayor Antonio Villaraigosa spearheaded the city's response to this fictional quake, but he made sure all city departments, especially the ever-critical first responders, LA's fire and police departments, acted as if this earthquake had been real. Imagine the most tumultuous two minutes of ground shaking you've ever experienced in your life. I'm a native Angelino and I've been through my share of earthquakes, but nothing, nothing that I've been through, nothing that any of us have been through, um, will compare to uh, the great earthquake. Imagine that when you call 911, nobody will respond. Imagine that you have to wait around for hours and sometimes days before emergency response personnel can even contact you. So as a city, how did we do? Are we prepared for a large earthquake and its aftermath? The fact this exercise was held at all means we're ahead of the game when it comes to being ready when the big one hits. We can talk about preparedness, but unless uh, you actually uh, physically uh, pr uh, prepare for uh, an emergency of this nature, you really don't know well, what comes up, what are the problems, uh, where are the kinks, uh, what, what do we have to work on, where are we strong. Succeeded beyond our wildest uh, expectations. We've ended up with 5.3 million registered participants. I think a lot more people heard about it through the news. And it's uh, we're trying to get the community to think about the earthquake problem. It's really easy to try and pretend it doesn't exist because they don't happen that often. And watching the city do all of this work and watching the people of the city be willing to be part of it is uh, very inspiring. The city is prepared. And why I say that is we in the Southern California area have gone through disaster after disaster after disaster. Earthquakes, brush fires, floods, and our first responders from the local, county, state have managed those and also have moved forward with recovery from those events in the past. Rarely do we take the time to face the reality of the greatest natural disaster Southern California will face in our lifetime. But today, we take that time. Today, we do uh, that exercise because we know that one day it will come. Make sure you're prepared for the big one. For tips on how you can get ready for an earthquake or other natural disaster, log on to www.readyla.org.
Spooky item pickup? Call 311, the toll-free number for non-emergency services. 311, your one call to City Hall. Hi, I'm Chris. I'm an Iyengar yoga teacher here in Los Angeles. And you're watching LA City View, Channel 35, Our City, Our Channel. Namaste.
morning, Los Angeles, and welcome to the City Council meeting for April 27, 2010. It is Tuesday, and it is a, a little bit after 11 o'clock. Uh, we did start an hour late uh, because of the funeral for um, former Chief Daryl Gates, and I know a number of members are returning as we speak from that funeral. I want to thank those council members who are here already, Council Members Alicorn, Cardenas, Krikorian, Perry, Reyes, Rosendahl, and Wesson. Thank you for your attendance, and the following council members are late, Council Member Hahn, Koretz, Labange and Smith. Ms. Hahn and Mr. Zine are excused today and Mr. Parks is excused to arrive late. So if they will please join us as soon as possible, we will begin our meeting uh, shortly. Uh, we have uh, before us the agenda for today. That's made available 72 hours in advance or 24 hours in advance uh, for our special meeting items. That's here in council chambers. It's posted in City Hall um, and also is available online at lacity.org. Um, where you also find links to our city departments and our city services to improve the quality of your life here in Los Angeles. We also do have uh, this meeting broadcast live on Channel 35, uh, rebroadcast each evening uh, on the city's cable system, and we are available online streaming webcasts through lacity.org and through your telephone by calling 213-621-CITY, um, and you can listen into the audio proceedings of the full council or any of our committee meetings using your telephone. Uh, if you would like to be heard on any of the items that are on today's agenda, please uh, fill out a speaker card here, or if you live closer to San Pedro and Van Nuys, you can fill out a card and uh, you can testify from those remote locations. Um, items that have already had public hearings would require reopening of those hearings by a council member, but items that have not yet had a public hearing, you automatically would be able to be heard here. Um, there is a podium and a clock to help you guide your time. And uh, for any general public comment on items that are not on today's agenda, but nevertheless under our jurisdiction, you can fill out a speaker card, too, for two minutes before the public. Uh, with that, this is our last quorum call. Uh, it is about 20 minutes after the hour for council members Wezar, Koretz, uh, Labange, and Smith. If they'll please join us, and if Sergeants at Arms can please inquire to their whereabouts. If we fail to uh, get a quorum, we will adjourn for lack of a quorum. Thank you.
with our final forum call for Mr. Wezar, Mr. Lebon, and Mr. Smith. Um, Mr. Wezar, Mr. Lebon, and Mr. Smith are now about 25 minutes late, um, and we do not have excuses on the desk for them. Uh, if we don't see them in the next minute or two, we will adjourn for lack of forum. Ms. Hahn is here, uh, who was excused. With that, we do have 10 members. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Alicon, Cardenas, Hahn, Weezer, Kuretsch, Kikorian, LaBanche, Parks, Perry, Reyes, Rosenthal, Smith, West, and Zion, Garcetti. 10 members present and a quorum, Mr. President. All right, first order of business, please. Approval of the minutes. All right, Mr. Wesson moves and Mr. Uh, Rosenthal seconds. Without objection, those will be approved. Next order of business. Commendatory resolutions for approval. Mr. Reyes moves, Mr. Kikorian seconds. Without objection, those will be approved as well. Next order of business. This is Tuesday, and it's time for the flag salute. All right. I can ask everybody to please uh, rise. And Mr. Rosendahl, would you be kind enough to lead, lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Yeah, please stand and put your right hand over your heart and say after me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Rosendahl. Next order of business, if we can run through the agenda, please. First items on the agenda, items one through four, are street lighting ordinances notice for public hearing. Council should have 12 members. Do you wish to hold those on the desk? Yes, please. Let's hold those on the desk. So we have 12 members. We're still awaiting Mr. Wezar um, and Mr. Smith and Mr. LaBange. Okay, yes, next order of business. Uh, items next items. Five through nine are items for which public hearings have been held. Okay. Uh, five through nine. Colleagues, anybody wishing to call any of those special? If not, let's go ahead and please open the roll. Close the roll and tabulate the vote. Ten ayes. Those are approved. Next items, please. Items 10 through 19 are items for which public hearings have not been held. Ten votes are required for consideration. There is a request to continue items 17 and 18 one week to May 4th. Okay, let's continue those oh, without objection. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Four, 14, sorry. Uh, 14 for Ms. Perry. And we have cards on... And here are cards on items 11, 12, 13, 15... 16 and 19, okay. leaving only item 10, which is an ordinance. Do you wish to hold that? Yeah, let's hold that on the desk for 12 members. Next items, please. On the continuation agenda, items 20 and 21 are items for which public hearings have not been held. Ten votes are required for consideration, and there are cards on both of those. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and call those special for cards from the public. And that will take us to our general public comment now. I'd like to invite uh, Dr. Clyde Williams forward as our first uh, Speaker for general public comment. Dr. Clyde Williams, 4115 Barrett Road, El Sereno, Northeast LA. We just had a meeting on ECAF, but I won't discuss that. I'll discuss he. How about the new interim acting general manager of DWP? Is he going to be more transparent than the previous ones? I doubt it because there seems to be a big snow job that DWP does. This morning, no one could figure out what had happened between the Board of Water and Power and the City Council as to do we have rate increases or not. Why? Because DWP doesn't clearly state, here's how much it's costing us now, here's how much it's going to cost us over the next one year, and here's how much it's going to cost us to the year 2020 when we have to get rid of coal and convert it to something else. Even the geothermal has apparently been found to be unusable. So we have a problem. DWP doesn't tell us what they're doing. Will the new general manager provide us with transparency? I kind of doubt it because he comes from a corporate world which does not allow public participation except through the board, through the stockholders' representatives. And we know what happens with Goldman Sachs. So I would highly recommend that you apply 245 to the appointment of the interim general manager for the Department of Water and Power and make sure that he's going to make it 
much more transparent and comprehensible because even one of the commissioners from the Board of Water and Power once said, if I can't understand it, how can I tell anyone else what it's doing? Thank you. Thank you very much. Bill Huey is our next speaker. After that will be John Walsh. Good morning, Mr. Huey. Uh, good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen of the LA City Council. I just want to bring your attention that the Council is considering a 0% rent freeze that landlords cannot raise their rent. This is terrible because more and more landlords are being driven out of business in Los Angeles. As they sell their buildings, developers are buying these properties, they're tearing them down, and the working poor are losing their apartments. It sends a very severe anti-business message. Right now, jobs are leaving LA, more people are becoming homeless and also the city employs these outside activist organizations through the LA housing department that come to apartment buildings and teach tenants how to sue their landlords this is this is discrimination these activist organizations are tied in the law firms you're driving business and you're driving jobs out of LA I suggest break all the contracts with these outside activist organizations and use that money to keep more city employees in the job. You have a lot of hard-working city employees who deserve to keep their job and not lose their job. And also, regarding Olvera Street, the city council stated that as a landlord, they're entitled to fair market value rent, yet they don't allow landlords in L.A. to have fair market value rent. You can't have it both ways. And then they want to raise the rent on these small businesses from 100 to 500 percent I mean, that's criminal. You're going to drive these people out of business. I mean, and, you know, ideology is one thing, but in the real world, you know, social problems are not solved by creating more laws. You have to have fairness for the workers. You have to have fairness for the landlords and for the renters. And when you corrupt the equation, the end result is always corrupted. So don't put the Olvera Street people out of business. Cut the contracts with these outside activist firms that pretend to be something they're not and help keep small landlords in business so people don't lose their apartments. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Huey. Uh, John uh, uh, Walsh is next. After that is Martin. Uh, John Walsh blogging at HollywoodHighlands.org, H-I-G-H-L-A-N-D-S. One half million visitors since September 3rd of last year. All we are saying is give peace a chance. All we are saying is give recall a chance. We have something remarkable here, left, right, center, multicultural, rainbow coalition. The only people who aren't refusing to recognize us is the LA Times and the Daily News. Thanks for the electronic media, which has given us enormous amounts of exposure. There was a Nazi rally here. Only four self-identified anti-Nazis, four self-identified Jews. Melrose Larry Green, a man with the uh, with the Star of David tattooed to him, a woman with Jewish uh, Federation of Labor Council uh, sign, and uh, one other person with uh, with a Israeli flag draped around him. There were six people identified as Aztecs. In the city of Los Angeles, they were wearing Aztec dress. When you have a Nazi rally and more Aztecs show up than Jews, only in Los Angeles, and it was not covered. The lying LA Times said that, that Nazis were severely beaten. The AP said light hurt, they were light, uh, moderate beating, light beating. I'm telling you right now, HollywoodHighlands.org, the name of the Heckler Gates, the name of the gay Heckler organization that attacked the, pre the mayor, I mean, excuse me, the, the president of the United States. I said it was on the website Friday. It wasn't. We had uh, problems putting it up. If you want to know what went on when the president of the United States was treated like trash by Hecklers, you have to come to my website. It's on there today. HollywoodHighlands.org. And as to you, Nazi tolerant, seek Heil! Nazi tolerant Garcetti. Seek Our next speaker is Martin Hanelan. After that is Phil Jennerjohn. If I can ask folks, please sit down the ice. Thank you. Hello, my name is Martin Hanelan. If you look me up on Google, I'm a pedophile. If you pull up the case, I'm nowhere on it. Because I went and helped out the Justice Department when they wanted information on the murder of a woman in Riverside by the Riverside Police, that's how they repaid me. 
Father Gregory, this Cardinal, and this Mayor have worked very hard and diligently to keep this story from being told. SNAP was compromised. Mary Grant was entertained by a sergeant out of Orange County protecting that crooked uh, police chief down there who had this investigation started all these years ago to protect Henry and George Steinbrenner from my past. If this seems very disjointed, it's because I don't have enough time to tell all this story here. I am not going to be abused anymore by your police department who put a camera in my room, recorded me and my girlfriend, listened to many conversations, then removed it, and she was raped. I don't know where she is now. I don't want to start something more with the LAPD, but I do want their help. And I would like Ms. Jan Perry to know, I stood in the rain for an hour and a half to talk to you in 2006. Beside me was an undercover police officer. When I finally got up to you, the captain from Central pulled up, came in, took you out the back. This has been the ongoing story because of the illegal wiretaps, cameras, and the undercover police officer working in my building. Thank, Thank you. you. Our next speaker is Phil Jenajan. And after that, we'll go to uh, Van Nuys and Donna Perriman will be our next speaker. Hi, good morning, council members. My name is Phil Jenner John. I'm currently a candidate for U.S. Congress in the 33rd Congressional District. Uh, my opponent in the election is uh, Karen Bass. She's an uh, valid socialist. Uh, unfortunately, she believes in the uh, ideology of uh, totalitarian government control over everything and everyone, especially when she's in power. And it's uh, not surprising that she has the uh, ringing endorsement of many people sitting here at this council. Uh, I'm not here today to talk about that election. I'm here today to talk about the uh, recall of Mayor Antonio Viragosa. I have uh, petitions right here. Uh, the website, recallcityhall.org, is going pretty well. We have a lot of people uh, volunteering and uh, uh, setting out to uh, distribute petitions around the uh, city. Now, the plan is uh, there are thousands of precincts in this city, and we're going to need uh, actually a lot more people than what we have right now. Uh, the plan is we're going to uh, raise money, we're going to pay for the printing of the, these petitions, and we're going to have people go around in their, their own neighborhoods and precincts and drop these off on the doors of registered voters. And the voters will have an opportunity. They can read it, and they can sign it and mail it in, or, or they can choose not to. It's possible the mayor could survive. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, there are a lot of people who are willing to help, and uh, some of you here in council chambers today or, or somewhere in the city hall building are interested. Uh, we have a big box. We have a big stack of petitions in the back if you want to take a, a stack and go hand them out in your neighborhood or uh, uh, one of your community organizations. And uh, that's about all I have to say about that. Is this one other question I have? Get a little is, closer to the microphone, Mr. Okay. Thank you. Uh, one other question I have is why, why is Richard Alarcon still here? I mean, to me, uh, the city is just begging for a lawsuit from the voters of the 7th District for fraudulent representation. I think you need to take care of that situation. Thank you. Our next speaker is Donna Perriman. She's in Van Nuys. After that, Arnold Sachs back here in Council Chambers. Good morning, Ms. Perriman. Good morning. Anyway, Marion Fogler couldn't be here. She's not feeling well. I miss, I miss her inside, but she'll be back. Now, the city council wants high-priced uh, high rail. They don't care how much security problems it causes. It invites robberies, assaults. We have to have security around these rails. We don't have the money to buy security uh, f for these rail projects we have now. Now we want more. Where are we going to put the? Uh, where are we going to put the stairs and the elevators and the? Uh, and escalators, who's going to lose their business? Who's going to volunteer or is it eminent domain? Orange, underground and orange line invite people to get on without paying also. You get on the middle near or near the end, you don't see a conductor. It's honor system. You use the machine, uh, that you use the machine or have a pass or a, uh, or a tap card to use on the machine too. I haven't been asked to show proof mostly. Secondly, we are in earthquake country. Well, these so-called trains, say, hey, it's subway, folks, ho uh, hold, on a, hold on on a huge earthquake. What if it hits in midday instead of 4.30 in the morning? These, uh, may, uh, the mayor, uh, Councilman Aldecon, Rosendahl, Garcetti, Cardenese, perhaps all of you want a legacy. Of course, the CRA uh, can have their new projects. We're in deep uh, trouble, and we spend. 
folks who are working on it, why do you want your job to end in 10 years instead of 30? It doesn't help you. It only helps Mr. Rosendahl see his dream. You have a lot of problems in the city of... Uh, City, our federal government will only help the MTA, CRA, city council, mayor, and uh, perhaps get their legacy so they'll be known for all time. In the meantime, our city employees are having all sorts of problems. I say let's recall Mayor Antonio now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our next speaker is Arnold Sachs here and then Anchor Patel. Good morning, thank you. Arnold Sachs, I'd like to give a shout out to Zuma Dog, hope he's well. And uh, Mr. President, I hope to see you in uh, Pumping Iron number, uh, sequel number 22. Saw you a video on TV yesterday at the park. That being done, uh, there was an article in the uh, LA Times on the 10th or the 16th, Audit Rips Fire Department Discipline. And I was just wondering what's up with the fire department. It states in this article, in 2006 there were 3,600 members. But the article goes on to say that there are more than 1,600 complaints filed in the last two years. So what's wrong? That's almost one out of every two firemen are filing a complaint against the city. What's the cost to investigate these complaints? What the heck is going on with the fire department that there's 1,600 complaints? one out of every two. By the way, in this article on the March 16th, 24 percent in state lack health insurance. I wonder how many of the people who are um, under the auspices of the living wage law lack health insurance. You know, the one where they get an extra dollar twenty-five, unless they work at the airport, where they get three twenty-five extra, and the companies let them, are, are allowed to eliminate their health insurance coverage an outstanding plan put together by the city council and then finally the mayor recently has come out with his budget and in his new budget he mentioned that there's going to be almost a total of around four thousand people laid off and people were asking the questions was how come why do we get such wildly um, skewed numbers, 3,000, 8,000, 4,000, 6,000, he said, we go with the information that we were given. So when he was given the information back in 2008 and 2006 that the city was going to be in financial difficulties, why the Thank hell did much. he give raises to the Thank unions? Thank you, Patel is our next speaker. And after Mr. Patel will be Matt Dowd. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Uncle Patel and I'm a concerned citizen. Now there is discontent among the people. The people are discontent because we have a mayor who is more willing to cut funding to libraries and parks than his own personal staff. Right? The mayor's department, the salary is $21 million. The councilman's department also has a salary of $21 million. Austin Butner, the new interim manager of the DWP, was a deputy mayor of Antonio Viragosa. You guys need to look into that. There are some connections there that are very fishy, at the very least. Now, Council President Garcetti and Perry are on record as saying that they, you don't trust the DWP. We don't know what they're doing. They have many projects, and they list these projects by one line. They have a number, a reference number. They say, information technology, $16 million. And then they have a reference number. These reference numbers, if we made them more accessible, we would know what these projects are about. And throughout the budget, they have hundreds of projects with reference numbers, one line, without any detail. If you're talking about transparency, we need to get a hold of these reference numbers and get more information on these projects that they're running. Now again, the city council has 108 approved positions. I don't know what that means. I thought I only, as a, as a voter, we only approved 15 positions. These other positions should be made public and visible. So now I call on you, councilmen, to how about let us know who your staff is, how much they're getting paid, what their duties are. Because we can't ask the mayor that because he's just going to say no. Now, out of you councilmen, maybe one of you guys would have the, the guts to make your own staff transparent to the people. 
Because that's what we want. We want to see who's representing us, what they're doing, how they're helping us. Because it's not the job of the government to employ people. It's the job of the government to make sure that private companies create employment, to govern the competition, to make sure that it is fair. Thank you, Mr. Patel. Matt Dowd is our last speaker for general public comment. Yes, thank you, Matt Dowd. We're on Channel 35. All the children, you can wave. You're on TV right now. Just wave. It's okay. Thank you. It's my time. I can do that. Go okay, ahead, Mr. Dowd. Thank you. I'm Matt Dowd. I've got a federal case. In fact, two federal cases against the city of Los Angeles. The first one is five years old coming up. It's over my incident. Here's the case number. It's on my new banner, which will be at Venice Beach. That's my new banner. My own design, creative design, children. If you do creative design and you go out on Venice Beach, the police come and arrest you now. I've got 14 arrests for Pacific Breeze and then for playing guitar, being artistic is a crime in the city of Los Angeles and I've been arrested 14 times over it. See, but that's not a big issue. I don't even want to talk about that. I want to talk about the problems that the city is giving these children. The, see, the city doesn't have any money. There's no nest egg. They don't have any money. Right now they owe four billion dollars in debt, which is the worst form of poverty, children. Let me tell you, make a nest egg, save money, stay away from the big banks, because right now, see, let me talk about that. The city of Los Angeles, they used to have a piggy bank with $5 billion of all the retirement money, but they got scammed by Wall Street and, and the credit ratings, they're trying to blame the credit ratings, but the credit ratings, and listen to this city council, the credit ratings, because you're involved in this, the credit ratings were with those banks that were too big to fail. That's why they got the good rating, because they were too big to fail. Now what you need to do is get AEG in here, because they're broke. Morello Maddox just had to sell their big condo tower at a massive loss. Thank the you, city's Dowd. broke. That's your last public comment. And Mr. Koretz, if you'd like to make an introduction of the fine young students that are here. Well, although they already got partially introduced, uh, I'd like to introduce the third grade class, uh, room 12 and 13 from Wonderland Elementary. If you could all stand up, we'll recognize you. And Wonderland is a school that's known for uh, its activism on important issues, and they've done uh, a, a very well-known video on uh, saving funding for education. So uh, uh, we, we welcome the wonderful kids from, from this terrific school. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Koretz. If we can go to uh, the items we were holding on the desk for 12 members. The First four items first. And Actually, Mr. President, there's a card on item one, so okay. it'll be items two, three, four, and ten. Okay. If nobody wishes to call those special, let's open the roll on those. Close the roll and tabulate the vote. Fourteen eyes. All right, that is approved. Let's take up item one. John Walsh, if you'd like to come forward on item number one. John Walsh blogging at HollywoodHighlands.org. Uh, students, I'm never substituted at Wonderland. I'm substituted at about 150 schools, LAUSD. How many, when you see those lights in your street, the city gives you those lights for your tax money, and they do a very, very good job. But how many students in this class, these classes, think that illegal drugs like marijuana and heroin are bad? Raise your hand. Well, you know, these politicians will have a ballot measure. The voters will be able in November. Uh, sir, we have the street lighting to, before uh, us today. They will be able to legalize marijuana, and they'll go and try to make you. Mr. Walsh, we're happy to have those comments in general public comment. Stopping me from talking this way because they're on the sides of the drug. I'm sorry, sir. This is your, your last warning. We have a street lighting ordinance that's before us, and that's what we're talking on. Thank you. We're out of order. Thank you very much, Mr. Walsh. That will close our public hearing on this item. Just to review, just to review for uh, both our students that are here and everybody else, um, some who know this rule well, the State Brown Act says that for items that are before us, 
We can only discuss those items. In general public comment, Mr. Walsh, your, your questions would be welcome. And if I could ask folks in the audience to please lower their voices. Thank you. Please open the roll on item one. Close the roll and tabulate the vote. 14 I. Thank you. That is approved. Next item, please. Item 11, called special for cards. All right. Next we have uh, item 11 before us. I'd like to uh, call Mr. Arnold Sachs forward on item number 11. Item number 11. Good morning. Thank you. Item number 11 is dealing with a street light maintenance for the C and Figueroa Street Lighting District. It states that the Bureau of Street Lighting reports that if adopted, $12,700 will be collected annually starting with tax year 2010-2011. So I was wondering if the people who live in are going to be taxed in this district can get the same kind of deal as the DWP got to pay um, the city. The DWP is paying a lump, a, a sum of money in lieu of property taxes. The, that's what the seventy-three million dollars um, that we were talking about. So, can the public get involved in the same kind of program where they don't have to pay pop property taxes and they can, in lieu of their lighting district bill? Because I'm sure that they would like to be able to pick a sum that would be relative to their benefit and pay it to the city like DWP. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sachs. That'll close our general public comment for that item. We can please uh, open the roll, close the roll, and tabulate the vote. 14 ayes. That is approved. Next item, please. Item 12, call special for cards. All right, item 12 is next before us. John Walsh, if you'd like to come forward. This is on the uh, street lighting uh, at Lancashire and Killian. One minute. Hollywood Highlands, come to my website, Hollywood Highlands, H I G H L A N D S dot org. Again, this is maintenance of Killian Street and Lancashire Boulevard, Lighting District. You see the police, they're your friends. They're not har harassing me, are they, when I talk about lights? But the minute I say drugs are bad, these politicians up there will have me arrested because we have a big, big vote. Well, we're going to let sir, drug dealers. If you can pause this time, please. And lower. Time sir, you are, See, we I will don't not, want to get arrested. Not only will we not silence you, you can absolutely say that for two entire minutes in our general public comment. So we invite you to do that every single meeting, but we have to speak on the street lighting item under state law that is before us. Thank you very much. Please open the roll, close the roll, and tabulate the vote. And Mr. Walsh, if you're not able to contain yourself, I'm going to have to ask you to leave if you can't contain yourself. Thank you. Next item, please. Item 13, call special for cards. All right, item 13 is next before us. Matt Dowd, item 13. <sighs> yes, so uh, I'm going to talk about the street lighting district and what this is for the children to understand too is the city charges the residents a, a fee so they can maintain all their street lights but here's what's happening in the city is that the street lights will not be repaired the streets won't be repaired because the mayor is intent on only keeping services in the city that raise revenue because that's a fundamental necessity no it makes sense if you've got no money and you're six hundred million dollars in the red every year because the pension money has to be paid then naturally we're gonna we're gonna chop libraries kiddies we're gonna chop the libraries first you can check that they've already done it we had all the librarians in here i talked about it but the street lighting thing that we'll get back to now that's not gonna happen the maintenance so the best thing is for the people in the community to vote no for these because the city until it restructures its financial problems and the, and the global you know you all fell into it we told you not to follow all the other cities we warned you about the subprime market it was all a big scam and we said don't invest in downtown don't go to the no one wants to live here the affordable thing's not going to work you could bring it back to the lighting district please and after all the loss the things they're going to suffer are the street lights and the street maintenance 
and and the police eventually are going to suffer too but they're going to take all your trash collection money so the trash is not going to get picked up because we need the police first so just get ready for police only and all the people out there don't expect the city to clean things up it's time you get out on your own street and clean up the street for yourself now for once because you voted these people in they're the bad politicians and they wrecked it and it's over thank you just a reminder that if we can keep things to what is before us and the street lighting by the way is paid for just a point of information independent from the general fund this is a, a self-assessment on the by the property owners we can open the roll close the roll and tabulate the vote as is the maintenance 14 eyes next item please item 14 called special by councilmember perry and an amending motion has been circulated okay. and there are cards on that all right miss perry do you want to okay. hear the cards first we have four cards from the public oh, okay yeah, okay ahead. Uh, donna perriman is our first speaker in van nuys good morning again yeah. Yeah, good morning. CRA has six hundred and fifteen million dollars and it's growing. They have enough to pay for all the green projects so people won't have to do it on the race for DWP. I don't trust the CRA. They're only out for themselves and for glory. They all want their projects to go along with these green ur urban green sustainable communities. They all get those extra projects so people can see those green sustainables from office buildings, condos and affordable housing apartments. They will not have enough only for these green sustainable they will only have uh, not have enough only for those green and sustainables which will come out of their budget but the projects around it they will ask and receive from the city council haven't people learned yet about the uh, community redevelopment agency the CRA of course they'll get help from the city council they must do things to help councilman's legacy yet sometimes they do good things but at what cost? It proves to be a lot of money for grant consultants when our city is in deficit. We don't choose if these projects. We don't get. We don't choose if these projects are what we want, or it's another useful study to archive in somebody's portfolio. You ask me. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Perriman. Arnold Sachs is next. After that, will be John Walsh. Yes, thank you again, Arnold Sachs. Um, CRA, that's an oxymoron. Uh, increase the authority to award contracts to the pre-qualified pool of grant consultants by $400,000. Why was this necessary? From $900,000 to $1,300. So if you award two contracts, that's for $1,300,000, that's $26,000. That's $2.6 million. What happened to the $38,000? Is that for lunch? But in addition, this urban greening for sustainable communities, how does that relate to the mayor's initiative for a million trees? Where are you with the million tree initiative? Have you reached 100,000? Have you reached 200,000? Have you reached 10,000? Where is the standing of the million tree initiative? And yet you're going on with the urban greening for sustainable communities. CRA is going to get that money. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Zach. John Walsh is our next speaker. Matt Dowd will follow him. Pass. Okay, Mr. Walsh passes on this one. Mr. Dowd? Yeah, I'll wave this one. Thank you. All right, Mr. Dowd passes as well. That will close the public hearing. Ms. Perry, I'd like to recognize you uh, on this item now. Mr. President, this is just a technical amendment, um, that's all, and I would ask my colleagues to uh, join me in moving the Chief Legislative Analyst Report and adopting that as amended. That's Thank all. you. All right, with that as amended, please open the roll. Close the roll and tabulate the vote. Fourteen ayes. We'll send that forthwith without objection. Next item, please. Item 15, call special for cards. All right, uh, Mr. Dowd, on item 15. Yes, worth a minute on this one, talk about Bill Rosendahl. And this is something he's doing to the Venice community, so I, I might as well uh, let Channel 35 know about it. We have to cut the funding for the uh, Oakwood Recreation Center. Is this right? 
from 182,000 to 75,000. So uh, the cuts are coming everywhere, and uh, we warned about it. And there's another cut I want to I want to request is is cut out asking me about Zuma Dog. Just make him a PayPal donation and anything you want to know. Everyone comes up to me, oh Zuma Dog, this Zuma Dog, that. No, PayPal him and he'll Sorry, talk sir, to you for sure. That's not under our jurisdiction, but thank you. Um, that will close our public comment. Item number 15 is before us. Any members wishing to be heard? Seeing none, let's go ahead and prepare the roll. Please tabulate the vote. 14 ayes. That is approved. Next item, please. Item 16, called special for cards. Okay, Mr. Sachs, Arnold six, uh, number 16, and then John Walsh will follow. Yes, thank you again, Arnold Sachs. I imagine this item reimbursing the Los Angeles Department of Transportation uh, for traffic management has something to do with the fact that last year, after the council acted to rescind the special uh, status for the seven arenas in LA that were getting free traffic management for events. But they never mentioned how much that money was, was amounted to. So since Staples Center and since the Coliseum and since Dodger Stadium and since the Hollywood Bowl and since Galen Center and since the sports arena are no longer special status, how much do they pay for traffic management? We know that a farmer's market costs like $1,300, and a, fair, a, a street fair might cost about $1,100. But we don't know how much it costs for traffic management at Staples Center. Can't you tell us? Don't you know? I mean, it was eight years. No, it was longer than that. It was nine years before you acted. Three budget deficits, and you finally decided to act. I think the public deserves to know how much money was given away, in, all in the name of championships and cut services and reduced hours and furloughs and on and on. and. Yet, we don't. You can list special events, but you can't list that. Why are you hiding those numbers? Don't you think the public is big enough to accept the fact that they got screwed? Thank you very much. John Walsh is our next speaker. All right, he passes. Matt Dowd. Yes, another triumphant victory, and I'll take a minute. Accepting money for all the parking services that Tom LeBonge probably was giving away for free for years. The Dodgers and Nokia, Staples Center, Hollywood Bowl, the Greek Theater, Los Angeles Coliseum, Sports Arena. Let's give them parking. This is the great city of L.A. Los Angeles needs all these things. Let's give them. And now finally we said, hey, we need to get the money, and now we're getting it. So here's 750000 which is nice because you need it. There's an injunction coming out, and a lot of settlements and court things are going to need to be settled with, with me and a bunch of other people. So I'm, I'm glad we're getting the parking money. And another point I want to make is please don't sell the parking revenue. We're trying to tell you the basic fundamentals here. Don't sell the golden goose, fool. That will close our public comment. <clears throat> if there are no members of the council, let's go ahead. Oh, Mr. LaBanche. Thank you. I'd like to have staff come to the table. <laughs> Mr. Willis, thank you for your service to the city. and. Uh, I know you put this package together. Uh, the question is, I just wanted to ask you, how do you account uh, for, do you get each facility, give a uh, lump sum, or do they get an accounted bill for what they receive? Like, there's 14 uh, traffic officers around Dodger Stadium or the Hollywood Bowl or the Coliseum. Do you give them an accounting, or do they, how do you keep that in line? Uh, yes, Alan Willis from the Department of Transportation. 
we send every venue uh, detailed invoice showing how many, what people worked, how many hours they worked, what their rate of pay was, and they're required to reimburse us for their salaries. Great. So they get a deep. So, but they've paid you right now. Yes. This is yes. Accepted. But for each event that comes forward, they will get uh, a detailed invoice. Yes, some of them are required, uh, for example, because the convention center and sports arena uh, did not negotiate a, uh, a reimbursement agreement with us where we could bill them later, uh, what they do is they have to give us a deposit in full up front before we'll even work the event. And, and then we the give them a the sports arena and where else? And the Coliseum. And the Coliseum. Okay. And, then, uh, and then we still send them a detailed invoice showing what our actual costs were and we refund any unused portion of that deposit. And also, are we seeing uh, uh, private uh, services being hired? I see that near Staples Center sometimes. Do you see that at all? Yes. Uh, part of the agreements that we negotiated with the Staples Center and others uh, gave them the opportunity to uh, substitute qualified uh, special events people yes. who would do this, which is very for, good for a DOT staff. And the issue of the buses on Highland Avenue, how have you been able to observe that? Are your staff, or do you know? I know it's early in the season; they haven't started the Philharmonic yet uh, season, but right. So we haven't really seen uh, some good events to sort of like uh, assess that, but but. The, the thing that we're looking at is that uh, we've reviewed their plan. They are pulling the necessary street closure permits required by city ordinances. And so everything appears to be in order with their plan. And they get a full accounting invoice. Yes, they do. Thank you very much, Mr. Willis. When's your last day in uh, City Hall? Looks like it'll be June 4th. June 4th. You want to say you're going to come back before then? What? If you're going to come back, you're going to come back before the June 4th? Only if they need me for budget. If you want to say anything, I got another 23 during seconds. Bu during budget hearings, I'm sure we'll see much of it. Mr. Rosendahl. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, we're going to miss you, first of all, Alan. You, you've been a tremendous contributor. It's one of the things I don't like about ERIP. There's a lot of good people uh, are leaving us, and you're one of them. Um, what we did here, so the public understands, is go to the different venues, and, and, and that is Dodger Stadium, Staples Center, Nicoa Theater, LA Live, Hollywood Bowl, Greek Theater, and the Los Angeles Coliseum, and the Sports Arena. Now, you negotiated these relationships to the tune of 750000 uh, yes, that's an approximate figure. Yes, mm -hmm. and, and if it does, it, and first of all, congratulations on doing that. A year ago, we had trouble for them even in telling us to go pound sand, uh, and, and then we didn't give up because this is obviously in addition to everything else. We need to keep them uh, successful and traffic control work out and all that. And I'm very grateful they've come up with the money. Uh, do you think this is enough? Seven fifty thousand. This is enough to cover the period from October 15th of 2009 through the end of this fiscal year. I'm currently preparing long-term agreements for all of these venues, uh, and uh, that's something that I hope to submit to council so they can approve an ongoing thing, and that'll be, I guess, my legacy to the city. Well, one of your legacies, there's a lot of legacies you have, and we appreciate what you've done in the 11th district, but say, for instance, Dodger Stadium, it's $325,000. That could change, right? It's, it's an approximate figure between now and, and between October and, and June 30th. They still have the balance of their season to go after July 1st. Right. And that's what the longer term agreement will address. And in your discussions with them over these particular fees, like the Greek Theater 25,000, they're aware that we're coming back to try to create contracts that, that last more than just six months or a year. Right. And most of them actually, uh, especially the seasonal venues like the Greek Theater, Hollywood Bowl, and Dodger Stadium, want a an agreement that at least spans the fis two fiscal years. In other words, covers their entire season yeah. from the spring to the fall. And we said, well, let's make it a longer term one that they can be renewed uh, periodically by the council. And thank you very much. And it is revenue generating. It's going into our general fund, right? Uh, it's actually coming out of our general fund budget and going back into our overtime account to replace that money. So that's how you're going to yes. move the money around. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Rosendahl. With that, let's go ahead and please open the roll. Close the roll and tabulate the vote. 14 ayes. That is approved. Next item, please. Item 19, call special for cards. Uh, Dr. Clyde Williams is our first speaker on item 19. Is Dr. Williams here? Okay, uh, John Walsh, item 19. One minute, John Walsh, Hollywood Highlands.
Obamagate.org for the latest on Obama, Hecklergate. I remember, I'm not against the city. This is an excellent program. Arbor Day, unfortunately, uh, about that will be uh, May 1st. Also, International Workers' Day. I don't think you'll be celebrating that up here since you're all right wing. About as many city trees die every day as American soldiers die in Iraq and Afghanistan. You have a poor, poor record of trying to keep these trees alive. And uh, we would like to say that we want an anti-Nazi day on the same day. I know it's controversial, I know you're Nazi tolerant, and you're going to be coming back here, I understand. And I want to know how much Arbor Day costs the city. I say probably nothing. While the uh, anti-Nazi day, the pro-Nazi day costs us one million dollars. HollywoodHighlands.org for what's happening in this city. Thank you, Matt. Dowd is our next speaker. Have one minute left, sir. Yes, thank you. The uh, Arbor Day, May 1. See, it's a joke. I was here in 2006. Well, years ago, we're talking about the million trees. And, uh, you know, prophetically, we said it'll never work, and it didn't. You know, I came off the 10 freeway this morning on uh, Maple. You know, and it's ugly. The city is so ugly downtown right now. It's, it's, you know, and then you got this Arbor Day. What a joke. There's no, like, there's no trees in the city. It's just all ugly concrete and empty and trash and skid row and slime and grease and dirt. And, and, you know, that's the good news. The bad news is not going to get cleaned up because the city's broke, the pension, laces, lost all the money, that's all gone, and the street services are over. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Williams, uh, we would called your name. I know you stepped out. If you'd like to speak on this. I thought 14 and 15 would take longer. I'm uh, Dr. Clyde Williams, El Sereno, Northeast LA. Herber Day. It's a great concept. However, in the real world, a 28-inch diameter California Bay, California native plant, tree, 28 inches in diameter, like one of these posts, was cut down on a private lot, even though the city urban forestry unit knew that it was being cut down. Could they penalize the owner? No, because they just couldn't get there fast enough. So, uh, enforcement. Arbor Day is nice. You, and see all sorts of lovely events, but on a day-to-day -day basis, trees are being cut down. Every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, the Board of Public Works has tree removal permits. What do they do? They require two trees for each one. That is, if it's 28 inches in diameter, eh, a two-inch tree will uh, be replanted for it times two. Okay, maybe times four. So what are we coming up with? Oh, the million trees? If you had to put in a million trees, you need 20,000 trees in place each year to meet the requirement for a million trees. Right now, street services, parks and rec, everybody put together are doing around 16,000. So forget about million trees. It doesn't exist forget about Arbor Day because we can't even enforce the current regulations that we have right now and penalize those people who would cut down a 28-inch California Bay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other members from the council wishing to be heard? Not. Let's go ahead and open the roll. Close the roll and tabulate the vote. 14 eyes. That is approved. Next item, please. Item 20 called special for cards. Uh, Arnold Sachs, item 20. S sorry, sir. Did you want to speak on it or are you waving? I can't hear you. You have one minute left, sir, on item 20. Please, thank you again, Arnold Sachs. The infamous Dim Jim. From the same Dim Jim that was awarded the contracts at the airport. And that
budget has ballooned from $3 billion to $5 billion to $8 billion. The same Dim Jim that had to have two hearings to get nominated. First a 4-1 vote against Dim Jim, and then miraculously, even though she had nothing to do in uh, the airport commission, the airport director sitting in on the second meeting, and we know she had nothing to influence because she was here, and the city council grilled her. They asked her name. She got it right, and the questions. But the 4 1 vote against was changed to 5 0. The same Dim Jim. This is going to be a wonderful project. I can hardly wait to see how much this is going to increase by. Mm, Mr. John Walsh is next on item number 20. After that will be Michael Christensen in the Valley. John Walsh, HollywoodHighlands.org and RecallCityHall.org. Say it 240,000 times, it's a website that rhymes. Recall City Hall, Recall City Hall. It actually means recall the mayor. Uh, but the issue here, incidentally, the harbor, you're doing a wonderful job there. Dim Jim is, the, they're the people who managed uh, the subway. Go out and take a look at the subway from hell to the sea, and you'll see that it's falling apart. Uh, HollywoodHighlands.org, and I'd just like to point out, when I spoke out against legalization of marijuana, it wasn't the city attorney who was against the, 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 uh, the, uh, the law, the, uh, uh, the initiative. It wasn't the city attorney that stopped me from speaking to the children. It was Eric Garcetti, who is in favor of legalization of marijuana, because he wants he to run for office in the He is way off here. Thank you, sir. That will close our comments on that item, except for Michael Christensen in San Pedro, excuse me, not the Valley. Uh, good morning, Mr. Christensen. Uh, good morning, President Garcia, are, members of the council. Hold on one Michael second. Christensen. We can hear you on That's the see if we can get the director of the Harvard Department. Hold on one second, sir. We want to see if we can get the video up. Um, if not, we'll at least be able to hear you, but we can't see you right now. Just hold on two seconds and we'll see if there's technical difficulties. Okay, there's no vi video in San Pedro, but we will be able to hear you. Sorry, Mr. Christensen, we'll start your clock again if you'd like to go ahead. Michael Christensen, Deputy Executive Director of Harbor Department uh, from San Pedro. Uh, my purpose for submitting a speaker card was to present myself in case there were any questions from council members concerning this item. Okay, great, thank you. We'll, we'll just stand by there and we'll let you know if there's any questions for you. Mr. Weezer. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. I had asked that we continue this item uh, about a week ago because um, this item is asking for two things. One is to amend the name of the contractor, and the other is to extend the contract for one year without cost to the city. So if Mr. Christianberry, I think is his name, if he could answer how, we, how are we extending this contract with, for one year with this contractor with no cost to the city. Hello, did you hear my question, sir? Yeah. Yes, sir. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, go ahead. We can hear you now. The, uh, this uh, contract uh, builds the new port police building, which has incurred some scheduled delay. The scope of the work is unchanged for this contractor, and as such, there is no budget increase. So the contractor will continue and complete their performance with no additional funds or with no additional budget, I should say. Uh, uh, sir, how do we pay for construction management services? Are they by hour? Are they annually? Um, if they are by hour, how are they going to perform for another year without charging the city? The services are, are rendered per the scope of the agreement. And if the scope uh, are basically are individual items of lump sum payment, and so long as they, uh, we keep the scope the same, uh, it does not change the cost of the services. And how long, uh, how many people are going to be working or providing these services for a year from this firm? Um, well, first, sir, the, uh, they will not all be extended a year per se. The contract term will be extended a year. Um, there are anywhere from um, a half a dozen to a dozen construction management personnel involved at any given time in the project. Um, and the extension uh, of the uh, delivery of the services um, uh, will not be for, for, for a full year. They'll simply be uh, uh, 
extending uh, a few months. We anticipate occupancy of the building um, about three to four months later than what we had originally okay, so envisioned. If it's for a few months, why did you ask for a year? And, and how many hours is this firm going to donate to the city to complete this? Um, I'm not sure I understand your question, sir, about the donation. Two, two questions. Number one question, you're asking us to extend this contract for one year, and you are now telling me that it's only for a couple of months. So why not tell us in the report that you only need it for a couple of months and not a year? That's question number one. Question number two is how many hours of construction man management services will this firm donate to the city, since you're telling me it's at no cost to the city? The, uh, the first question is um, they, the extension of the occupancy date is about four months. So the reason we asked for a year was because there will be closeout items that will extend beyond the occupancy date. Okay. And those will happen on an as-needed basis. Those will occur um, uh, throughout, the, uh, throughout the months following. We are quite sure we finished prior to a year, but we didn't want to have to come back again for another extension. In terms of donation, um, this firm will do however number of hours they need to do to complete the tasks that they agreed under the contract. Uh, if you'd like, I could come up with an estimate of the number of hours that they're planning on spending, but they're required to fulfill the scope of their agreement regardless of the number of hours it takes them to do it. Got it. So it's about four hours until you get the certificate of occupancy. It could be more to finalize the whole project, and that's what, why you asked for a year. If you could please forward that information to, to my office and our council members as to how many hours you expect this firm to complete this job. I, I, I just thought it was uh, interesting that uh, there will be no charge to the city when we are extending a contract for one year, but if you're telling me that most of the work is four months and that's when you get the certificate of occupancy, that makes a lot more sense than a year. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hahn. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mike, I just wanted to maybe clarify too, um, how, how is this paid for? Who pays the bills for uh, this contract? Is it the, the bills for the, the construction city, management is it services? City, is it city general fund or is it is it revenue from the port? The costs for the construction and construction management of the port police building are paid from the harbor department's proprietary funds. Uh, they do not affect uh, or come from in any way the general funds of the city. Right, and I think that's always important to note uh, that this money does not come uh, from the general fund, is not taxpayer dollars, um, and of course this is a uh, port police a building. We know that uh, we have increased the ranks of our port police officers since 9-11. Uh, we know that still the, the Port of Los Angeles is always one of those that's on the top ten list uh, for uh, a potential attack and we know that they have been operating out of very poor conditions um, at the Port of Los Angeles. This is a building that I think we have wanted for a long time. It makes sense. It's going to be state-of-the-art and it will, I believe, um, allow them to really perform their duties in a way that uh, lives up to the challenge that I think we ask of them every single day. So I've had this in committee, uh, and I would ask uh, you colleagues to, to support this today. Thank you, Ms. Hahn. And thank you, as always, for your leadership at the port. With that, let's go ahead and open the roll. Close the roll and tabulate the vote. 14 ayes. That is approved. Next item, please. Uh, item 21, call special for cards. All right. Uh, we have a number of speakers. We have uh, five speakers. I'd like to start with Joe Linton. Thank you for your patience. Good to see you. Hi, Joe Linton, um, bicycle advocate. Um, I just th those motions about the bike corrals. I just want to say bike corrals are good for business. Uh, you can get more customers parking a dozen bikes in the space of one car parking space. Good for pedestrians who get bikes off the sidewalk. And uh, this pilot one will be at no cost to the DOT. We're getting funding from the Neighborhood Council and from private donors. And I just want to thank uh, Councilmember Huizar for his leadership on this and Adele Viscara Barton, or, or Adele Viscara for his, his aid for uh, assisting us. Thanks. I'll get, I'll, I'll take a Thank you. Uh, Matthew Shodorf. <laughs> 
Hi, uh, my name is Matt Schildorf. I'm a small business owner in Highland Park. I, uh, I live and work in Highland Park. Uh, my wife and I have a small coffee shop, and we wanted to uh, uh, hopefully have this a bicycle crowd be the first one in Los Angeles, um, in, in uh, near our coffee shop, in front of our coffee shop on York Boulevard. Um, we want to thank uh, the council member for support on this. Um, we think it's going to. Uh, we know it's going to create a safer and better bicycling environment for all the uh, folks in Highland Park and the surrounding neighborhood, in Northeast LA. Um, and we also have the support of our the Highland Park Neighborhood Council, unanimous support of the Highland Park Neighborhood Council. Uh, the president of the nearby Occidental College. I mean, Occidental College is like six blocks from us, less four, five blocks. Um, uh, our, our building owner, uh, who's also our landlord and the president of the Chamber of Commerce of Highland Park, uh, supports us. Um, the the uh, owners of a uh, number of local businesses and, of course, the citywide bicycle um, associations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ramon Martinez is our next speaker. After that is John Walsh. Thanks a lot. How's it going, Council? I wanted to um, speak in support of this uh, motion. Rumo Martinez, I work with the Los Angeles County Bicycle Coalition. Um, this motion has only made it this far uh, because of the awesome support from Councilmember Wiesar's office, Councilmember Rosendahl. Uh, we've had great support uh, from Transportation Deputy uh, Adele Vizcarra. And um, as Matt said, the support of the community. Matt's the small business owner in which this bike crowd is going to go right in front of. Um, the property owner is in support of this. The neighborhood council is in support of this. Um, we've just seen huge, a huge wave of support for this motion. Um, so I ask that council support it. As well, I wanted to remind council about the broken window theory. And this is a, this is a concept that I learned from New York City's Department of Transportation and, and something that they learned from, from our former you know, chief of police, which is that if we have simple things like bikes that are getting stolen and we don't even have places to park them you know, conveniently and effectively and efficiently, then we're losing out on the larger battle on, on, on creating a livable city and creating a healthy city and creating a safe city. And so the little things like this that are cheap and effective and can just go in pilot project style can be really, really, really powerful in, um, in creating that safe city that we all want to see. So again, I ask for your support and uh, thank everybody for, for, for getting it this far. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Martinez. John Walsh is our last speaker. You have one minute left, sir. I have one minute of life left. HollywoodHighlands.org and RecallCityHall.org. 100% in favor of uh, the bike coalition. Bike co every person on a bike is another reason why we don't need rail. They get where they want to get on their own. I'm very upset about the number two person at LADOT. Uh, and then thanks to uh, Councilman uh, Wezar and LaBarge. Number two piece person at LADOT underneath uh, Miss Robinson is a man named John E. Fisher. He's very anti-bike, he's been very nasty, and he should get some attitude correction and realize who he works for. Now remember, this is the only city in, uh, in L.A. County, 88 cities, that makes you wear a tag. So I'm wearing a tag with a Jewish star on it because in, uh, my great my grandmother was named Bertha Berger. She was a Jew, and at this meet at this he's not talking about site, this item. Okay, anti-Semitism. Thank you very much. That'll close our comments on that item. Um, Mr. Wezar is our first speaker on this. Mr. Wezar. Thank you very much, Mr. President. First, I want to thank the speakers who came out to support this motion, and not only for your work today, but for your work throughout uh, this process to allow us to get here. It is through your activism, uh, advocacy, and involvement that we've been able to do this as well. I also want to thank the Transportation Committee, Mr. Rosenthal, Koretz, and uh, um, uh, uh, Mr. Labange for supporting this, and the Transportation Committee. Uh, uh, Council members, this is a very unique thing we're doing here. Uh, there are no bike corrals in the city of Los Angeles. This will be the first and we're doing it on a pilot basis so that eventually and hopefully we could expand the corrals, bike corrals throughout the city of Los Angeles. Uh, we expect that they, this would be a success and people will want to have their own, whether it's my colleagues in their council districts or other businesses throughout the city because they're going to see how efficient 
environmentally friendly, and good for business that the corral, uh, bike corral can be. Uh, what we are doing here is to put a bike corral in front of Café de Leche, a coffee shop in Highland Park, uh, that will allow for the parking of anywhere between 10 to 20 bicycles. Uh, we understand that the business owner is supporting this um, uh, through some of his funds, uh, their funds, and that uh, eventually, hopefully, the Department of Transportation could find additional funds should we expand this. It's no cost to the city. This is a good private partner, uh, public partnership. Uh, and again, um, uh, we are hoping to uh, not only help with the promotion of bicycle riding in the city of LA, but when you make it more convenient, both for businesses and customers alike, that's when people are going to start using bicycles more often. So thank you so much, and I ask for your eye on this, and again, thanks for everyone who came out here today and for your work, and I look forward to riding my bike there to get my cup of coffee on a Saturday morning. Thank you. Mr. Rosenbaum. Uh, yeah, just a quick comment. Uh, it's kind of shocking that it's the first. And let's just hope this is the beginning of, of these corrals throughout the city. I want to thank Matt, the, the, the owner, for encouraging it and working with us and making it happen. Obviously, I want to thank the staff for, for the fine work they did on it. But this is a new day for us in the city of Los Angeles. Finally, bicycling is getting the respect, at least at that spot. The Bicycle Bill of Rights needs to move forward. We need to do whatever we can uh, with Measure R, the 5 to 10 percent flexibility for, for bike paths. This is all the, the beginning of everybody getting on a bike. And I intend one of these days to get on one and ride and put my bike in a corral and have a cup of coffee somewhere along Venice Boulevard, which is where we have uh, some of the shops already locating. And I look forward to seeing bike corrals there. Thank you, Mr. Weezer for your leadership on it. Thank you, community, for coming out. Thank you. Mr. Reyes. I also want to rise and thank Cousin Wissar and the folks who are involved in Highland Park uh, regarding this great step. You know, colleagues, incrementally, as Councilmember Roosevelt was saying, slowly but surely we're beginning to bring to light the advantage of a bicycle infrastructure, of bike paths. I mean, when we look at our rail stations, our transit-oriented districts, we start accepting the fact that if we had lockers for bicyclists, if we had places to secure our bikes, if we have ways to rent bikes for one-way trips where we can just drop them off and let someone else use it, and actually start identifying our corridors that should be safer based on injuries and incidents, these are the types of incremental steps that we need to take and they're actually occurring. But the sad reality is we have a staff of maybe two or three now, about three. We have four engineers now in the Department of Transportation for a city of over three million. Uh, and that hurts us because it's hard to move these great concepts into reality. About four years ago, uh, you supported and we passed a demonstration project for District 1 and how we can look at corridors, uh, create bike boulevards, and actually create safe passages for bikes. And it still has yet to be realized because of the overwhelming work that would take and the lack of staff that we have in promoting and actually implementing these policies. So I want to thank those who are here today. Uh, don't lose heart. Don't give up. It's still a long journey. Uh, when that riverway becomes a major bikeway for all the communities in the city, we can extend into all the major destinations through a safe bike route. I think our grandchildren will be thanking us for this effort. So thank you very much. Mr. Labonge. Well, thank you very much. Uh, wish this luck. Uh, great luck as it is a new innovation. I also want to put a shout out to the Nagura family, which is on this quarter. Uh, of Highland Park for years and years, and the late great Mike Nagura, who was a great citizen of Los Angeles, now his daughter runs the business there, so it's a very special day as we move forward. Congratulations to all those who be involved. And I didn't ask anything for the city of Mr. Alarcon. Council members, I um, rise to support this, but I, I just wanted to call your attention to an article in today's uh, LA Business Journal written by uh, Joseph Bray Ali, who is the son of my chief of staff, Said Ali. And it's putting parking in its place. 
He is an avid bicyclist, and I just want to point it out uh, so that uh, my chief of staff will like me that much more, but also so that uh, you can read this article. It's exactly on point. Talks about creating uh, opportunities, not just uh, things like bike corrals, but it talks about uh, planning for bicycling uh, and changing the the, the culture of development uh, as we know it to be uh, more capable of encouraging bicycling in Los Angeles. It's a good article. I, I just recommend you read it. LA's Business Journal. And I'm sure my chief of staff can get you a copy if you need one. Thank you, Mr. Alarcon. Uh, this matter is now before us for a vote, colleagues. Please open the roll. Close the roll and tabulate the vote. Fourteen eyes. Matter passes. Uh, Ms. Perry, do you have a comment? Okay, I saw you standing. I thought you might. Uh, Mr. Clerk, next item, please. Uh, Mr. President, there is a special one, and the city attorney will speak to the findings. Mr. City Attorney on Special One, please. Thank you, Mr. President. Since the posting of today's agenda, the LAPD has notified city staff of the need for a council motion to direct the Department of Transportation to close parking lot number 753 so that the LAPD could use the lot as a logistics area for the May Day event. Immediate action is required to direct DOT before the event. Council must fir first make findings pursuant to Government Code Section 54954.2 before considering the substantive motion. On the findings? Anyone on the findings? All right. On the findings, open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. 14 ayes. Very well. The matter is now before us. No comment. So let's open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. 14 ayes. It is now passed for the uh, police to take care of that matter. Mr. Cardenas, do you have a question? <laughs> Mr. Cardenas, you don't have a question. You had that puzzled look on your face. All right, next uh, item, please. Mr. President, it does take care of the items on the regular agenda. Do you wish to recess the regular and go into the special? Let's recess our regular meeting and go into the special meeting. Alicon Cardenas, Han, Wiesa, Kuretz, Kikorian, LaBange, Parks, Perry, Reyes, Rosendahl, Smith, Weston, Zion, Garcetti, 14 members present, and a quorum. Very well. This is a one-item agenda. Item 22 is an item for which public hearing has not been held. Ten votes are required for consideration. And there are amending motions 22A and 22B that have been circulated. Ms. Perry. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. This morning in Energy and Environment Committee, we uh, did the, the clarifying motion in response to the uh, latest action from the Department of Water and Power regarding the energy cost adjustment factor. And at the table, we had the chief legislative analyst, the chief administrative officer, and a representative from the Department of Water and Power, their um, designated city attorney. And I think if I could just summarize and um, why don't you guys, if Mr. Miller is here, I don't think the CAO is here, and the attorney for the Department of Water and Power, if I could just summarize for the purposes of time. Um, the reason I felt there was a need for clarification is because there was some, some question as to whether or not the last action by the Department of Water and Power uh, meant that the rate increase was permanent. Uh, it was, in fact, permanent. Um, if I could just, again, summarize. Uh, the current ECAF rate is 5.09, and then uh, October the 1st, it then increases to 5.79, and that is a permanent rate increase. I'm sorry, 6.9. 6.9. 6.9. Wow. On, on July. That would have been scary. Thank you for, thank you for correcting me. Uh, you're absolutely right, because that's right. You're right. 5.69, October the 1st. Um, and I felt it was important to clarify this on the record. Uh, now, some of us did vote no on the uh, affirmation motion that was sent back to the commission. Um, I felt, when I can only speak for myself, I can't speak for others, and I don't think that's appropriate, but that we had, we had made an offer, the commission had rejected it, they could have initiated their own counterproposal, but they chose not to, and uh, quite frankly, um, for those who did vote to do the reaffirmation in the hopes that it would create a good pathway for having a power revenue transfer, that has not yet occurred. And um, I want to note that for the record. Now, um, I had contemplated uh, doing a 245 on this today. Um, 
and we can see how it goes, but I do have a fallback position. Um, and we can pursue that too. I'll see how many speakers are and then I'll uh, cycle back. Thank you, Ms. Perry. Uh, Mr. Koretz. Yeah, I know I'm not speaking for everyone, but I know the conversation around this item led at least me and I'm pretty sure some other council members to believe that this was a rate increase that would only be for one quarter and that would revert back to its original rate pending some actions by the DWP upon which we could decide to give uh, future rate increases. Um, how did that conversation occur that where there was very little discussion, if any, of this being a permanent rate hike and yet it turns out that it was? How do we wind up here? Don't all speak at once. <laughs> um, well, uh, Mr. Kretz, um, the, the conversation from the beginning, that the board action, um, the analysis that PA Consulting presented to you, the, the joint report from the CEO CLA, um, all of that dealt with the allowable increase under the ECAF. Uh, none of that information presented to you contemplated that the rate would actually roll back. Um, now, I think it, it, it's, it's important to understand the, what this ECAF cap increase means. The board can do a 0.1 increase per quarter. They don't have to make any findings. If the board goes above 0.1 cents per quarter, they do have to make a whole series of findings that it is necessary to go above the 0.1 cents in order to maintain their financial integrity. So what the board initially asks you to do is accept the findings that they had a necessity for a 28% increase to maintain their integrity, even though the subsequent increases still had to be approved. What the council did is, and what PA recommended, is they did not accept that. The council did not agree to make those findings. The council agreed on the findings that they needed a, a first increase, in this case a 0.6%, and said, go back, make the findings again, and give us the opportunity to have the transparency on your efficiencies, on your DSM program, on your RPS program, before another increase. But at no point was there a discussion that the actual rate itself would roll back. Well, maybe I'd have to go back to tapes and such, but I, I recollect that to be the conversation. Um, and most of the conversation, I agree, was around these more ongoing increases, but that was around the recommendations. I don't think the council was under the understand, uh, understanding that they were going along with those recommendations. And in fact, um, the first motion which, which the DWP rejected, I thought was for only one quarter. And that the language in this was very similar. There may have been a tiny difference that caused this. But I certainly thought what we first sent to the DWP and they turned down was absolutely only for one quarter. Otherwise, I don't think they would have turned it down. A am I wrong? Well, again, I, I, you know, I can only speak to the information that was presented um, in, in that what the council turned down was the findings that they needed more than the first quarter increase. But it was not an actual rollback of the rate. The discussion of what the, the impact would be, the 4.8 percent, for example, that the council um, uh, recommended to the board, that's an annual increase. If we were only talking about one quarter and that it would roll back, we would be talking about a 1.2 percent increase, not a 4.8 percent increase. So in terms of, uh, of the context of the discussions and the impact on the rate payers, it was all annualized and did not contemplate that the rate would be rolled back. Well, all I can say is I think this is a, a surprise to, to more than one of us. Um, and I would hope that uh, the DWP would realize that some of us feel scammed and misled. Um, and if they're ever looking for further rate increases or any other cooperation from us, they're going to have to address this in some way and not deal with it as if it's a, a permanent gift to them because it, it was never intended to be the case. Thank you. Mr. Garcetti. Thank you very much, Mr. President and Mr. Kretz. I think we all uh, have plenty of evidence of feeling scammed and misled over the last uh, a few months. That said, my questions are for the city attorney, and I think this will be an important um, 
uh, point for counsel, which has voted many times on different ECAFs or has decided not at other times to 245 them. First of all, can the council set rates? Does it have the power to set rates? The board uh, establishes the rates and the council approves them by ordinance. So we can, we can, if we want, then approve or reject them, but we cannot set the rate level. That is correct. The, the board is the rate setting authority. Is there anything that we can transmit which becomes an official transmittal that they act on on setting rates, or can we only advise and they have to take an independent action? Correct. There's an independent action. You can certainly okay. advise and provide recommendations, but they, it is an independent action. And that's important because I know a lot of the coverage was saying the council set it or we sent something to them which was which was a formal rate increase. We, we did not do that, nor do we have the power to do that, colleagues. Third question, does the Board of Water and Power on the ECAF have to calculate this each quarter? That is correct. It is a, and, and I think that's an important <laughs> distinction, Council Members. There is a energy cost adjustment rate, and on a quarterly basis, you can make an adjustment to that, to that rate. Under the curtain ordinance, you're only allowed to, and it's a, it's a mathematical equation, but you're only allowed an increase to that adjustment of 0.1. And that's what we've been referring to in, in the discussions here as, as the cap. The, the item that you passed allowed the increase of that cap, that quarterly cap, to 0.6 for the fiscal quarter from July 1st to uh, September 30th. But on October 1st, by ordinance, by law, the board has to recalculate the ECAF. If, in other words, if they want to keep that 0.6, they have to calculate that again, and we have the power to stop that if we want to 245 that. The, the, the 0.6, actually, the cap increase of 0.6 mm -hmm. expires on its own on September, after September 30th. So on October Did everybody 1st, hear that? It expires on its own on September 30th. That's the cap increase. Right. On October on October 1st, you revert back to the cap increase of 0.1 Correct. that is under the existing ordinance. The way the ordinance is written, it's 0.1. By the way, though, with the 0.1, for instance, when the board did not decide to do the 0.1, for whatever reason they decided, they sent the whole thing back to us with 0.7. They also didn't pass a 0.1. It didn't automatically go in, did it? The point one? That is correct. That, so for anybody who's reporting or covering and saying that, well, that automatically something kicks in, it cannot, it will not, and we have the power, if they do decide to find that point six again, we have the power to 245 it. I, I like the amendment that Ms. Perry put in. I think she referred to it as a fallback position. It restates what we did. I would add something to strengthen that with her permission if that comes up, which is to make sure that they report on September 1st because that was some of the language of the original motion. I don't want to wait till October 1st, but if that's all right with you, to make sure they come in on September 1st. They're not obligated to do so, but for me to be able to vote for anything moving forward, I certainly wanted to see that they have some accountability, they have some transparency, that they have a plan, that they know what the renewables are going to be, that they have a ratepayer advocate in place. But if that could be accepted as a friendly amendment, would that be okay? When I put it in. Okay, when, when it gets put in. If it gets put in. And if we put it in. Good, okay. If it gets put in, I'd like to, to add that. But, but I'll just conclude on that. Folks, we have the power. It says right here, the ECAP shall be calculated four times each year. If they don't calculate it, they don't get it. If they do calculate it, we have the power to stop it. And as the city attorney just said, it's crystal clear, they don't, that does not stay there. It resets back down, not to zero, but to the point one that we've had in for... Some series of a year or so. Correct. And again, that is that is the cap that reverts, not okay. the. And I understand the, the complications of, of this, folks. This is not easy policy stuff, but I hope that makes that crystal clear. What we did, where the power lies, and how we can continue to keep them accountable. Because I certainly want to. This council does, and we will continue to have that power. It cannot be taken away by anybody. Mr. President, for clarification, that September 1st date actually falls during the council's recess, the summer recess. The first, then the first council meeting after September 1st. Which would be September 7th. Thank you. Clarification. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mr. Cardenas, you're up. Point of clarification to Councilmember Garcetti. You want September 1st or the date that you just described or on or before? The, the, well, I'd love on or before. Thank you for that clarification. That's what I We'd love to see them before if they okay. get a repair right. advocate. In place I mean, if they're ready like a month yeah. before, we don't want them to wait, right? Sure. Absolutely. Okay. Ms. Cardenas, you're up. Great. Thank, thank you very much. Um, to the three gentlemen that are sitting here, uh, a question was asked about potentially being misled, or I, I forget what one of my colleagues, the word that, that he used. Uh, Thanks. But 
can any of you clarify which one of you ever said to this council on the record, because you came and spoke on this matter on the record, many of you on and off uh, over the many times we discussed rate increases over the last 60 days or so, which one of you actually used the word temporary increase? You don't have to speak if you didn't say anything, because I don't remember any of you saying that, that it was a temporary increase. Well, it, 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 um, it, it, to be very clear, we may have used temporary increase in the cap, a temporary increase in the allowable increase, not a temporary increase in the rate. Okay. Now, when it comes to the rate and the cap, did any of you ever tell the council that an increase, for example, on July 1st or when we were contemplating April 1st, that that would actually go down after three months? That the actual rate that people were paying, the rate payer was paying, was going to go down after three months? No. Did you tell us it was going to go down after two quarters or three quarters or four quarters? No. Okay. Who's, whose job is it or who takes the primary steps in order to take an action so that the rates can go down? Because we know technically rates can go down, correct? They could, but it's not very likely. But they could technically go down, right? Like the Department of Water and Power Board could actually take up an agenda item and actually reduce the actual rate. Councilman, so two, let me make two points on that. One, with, within the, the existing ordinance, the, the ECAP, if it's, it's a mathematical calculation. So if the numbers were there, it could technically go down. And in reality, those numbers, because of the, the cap, you, you won't get there because you're under a collect. That's just a mathematical possibility. But if you wanted to reduce the rate at some point, you could not do that under the existing ordinance. You would have to have another ordinance that would allow for that rate reduction. Okay. So basically what I'm getting at is it's my understanding after being approached by many people of the press or what have you that perhaps there was some misleading going on or perhaps uh, what was said wasn't the truth, etc. But the bottom line is after I read the latest motion the council put forth and some people voted no and some people voted yes, I personally read it many times. My, I asked my chief of staff to read it and we dialogued. I said, what do you think it says, etc. I went over the minutia of certain words and things of that nature. I talked to various individuals. I talked to you and I talked to you and I talked to many people about it and then I voted on it. And I never under any circumstances thought that I was voting for something that was going to be a temporary three-month increase that was going to come back down, that the rate was going to come back down to the rate payer, or over six months or three quarters or four quarters or what have you. That was never my impression. Uh, however, one of the things that I personally did is I went ahead and read it myself. I made sure that people read it, whether I trusted the other people or what have you. I questioned them and I asked what their interpretation was, what they thought this word meant, what they thought that word meant, what they thought the context of these words in the drafting of that motion looked like, etc. And then that's how we decided what to vote on. And I did vote. I did vote to increase the rate. I don't like how you turn our meeting. Mr. LaBanche. You Thank you very much. Members, get, what disappoints me in, as a uh, lifelong lover of water power is the process. Uh, and it's been very confusing to try to explain this to the public that we represent. And it's been difficult. And I've had a number of community meetings where people have not been able to understand this. We use terms, and everybody knows what the FBI is, everybody knows what the DWP is. But ECAF, they don't understand. Uh, in simple terms, it would be if I was uh, saying that we have to pay for our costs to do our business, whatever our cost is, your electric bill, is that right? Is that what it basically is, to bring power to Los Angeles? Certain, certain elements, yes, that's correct. I'm a, well, but explain it. See, here's this problem. And this is what I'm disappointed, because I love water and power. You guys don't stand up and say exactly what it is and what we have to do to bring the power to Los Angeles. And I hate to say you guys, but it's a situation that I've always fought for water and power, but this time I can't fight for water and power because I don't think you've explained it right. Because as we go talk to the people that we represent, they have difficulty totally understanding this. So would, please explain this power that comes 
to here, that light up there, how does it get here, what does it cost, and what is this charge? Because the people pay for it, if you would please. Council member, with respect to, to the ECAF in, in general principles, it's for, for recovering cost of fuel, uh, purchase power, including renewable energy and demand side management. Uh, if, if you wanted to, to get into the specifics of those. Well, that's items. real good there. The cost of purchasing power, the cost of, that's real good so to explain it. Those, those yeah. are, the, those are the, the general elements of, of the uh, energy cost adjustment factor. It recognizes that those costs fluctuate, so you have, you have this adjustment factor that captures those fluctuations. Um, that's, that's in a simple lawyer's description, if right. you want. If but some of the gas comes from El Paso, correct? If it could be graphic, it comes from West Texas, and the cost to bring it to Los Angeles, that would be the natural right. gas. So that's what we're paying for. That's what this is about. That's one element, correct? Yeah, that's one right. element and other elements as well, which I think we have to tell the people. Yeah. Water Power always told the story that people understood it and always supported it. But we have to tell that story. I mean, it, it is very important. And, and the other thing, too, members, I do only believe that this was an action that, we've, that we could take up again in, in the fall totally. I never believed it was for permanent. Uh, when this was discussed at all. I never saw anything like that. So I want to support Ms. Perry, who's our chair, and I just want to rise. I always want to support water and power, but I have difficulty today uh, supporting water and power, which is very difficult for me to do. Thank you. Mr. Rosenau. Uh Thank you, Mr. President. I, too, like Mr. Koretz, uh, feel that I didn't understand it or it wasn't explained properly, but all i got to look at is the motion. And this is what I signed off on, and it says, adopt a 0.5 cent kilowatt increase effective July 1 that allows the cap to be raised uh, from 0.1 uh, to 0.5 only for the fiscal quarter beginning July 1, 2010 to September 30th. When I saw that word only, I just assumed it was for that quarter and that you would come back and explain all these things and clean up our act so that we no longer are in this credibility issue. I mean, the mayor brings in Austin Butner, a guy from the private sector. He's now going to try to reshape it and focus it. But frankly, maybe it's my naivete, I'm not as smart as Mr. Cardinal is, uh, I thought that word only meant only for that quarter. Explain that to me. And, and, and it does mean only for that quarter with respect to the cap. As, as the motion language that the council passed says, that allows the cap to be raised from point one. Um, so it, it's the cap that's, that's raised. What your existing ECAF allows, your ECAF allows a quarterly adjustment. Under the existing ordinance, you're allowed a quarterly ECAF adjustment. The ordinance provides that that adjustment shall not exceed the prior quarter's adjustment by more than 0.1 unless you get an increase to that allowable adjustment. And that's what the, the motion and the resolution did was increase that allowable adjustment for that quarter only so that that cap increases for the quarter and then at the end of that quarter your cap reverts back to your ordinance language of 0.1. Now, I'll be honest with you, if I was watching this, I still don't know what the heck you just said. My bottom line was I voted for one quarter in my mind, not for perpetuity that one quarter. When John Schwatt, a good journalist, sticks the mic in my face, he asks me that question. And that's the accountability of the media to us. At best, it was confusing. At worst, it, it, it was worse, obviously. So you're basically saying we approved for perpetuity that point what you you improve for one quarter the cap of point six okay. the 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 rate that that cap adjusts goes on falling because it is a cumulative so that goes on and then you can add to it just just as it, it's gone in the past yes you can add you can, can add I, to it on a quarterly I had basis somebody just talking simple language for a simple guy like me so i understood it was more than a quarter of that vote i mean i assumed it was just a quarter as did mr Koretz, and i'm sure we're hearing a little bit from mr labange the side a can we just make our language a little simpler so we understand it 
again, we're doing it under the existing ordinance, so if when we do the, the rate restructuring, that's certainly something that it can okay. be addressed well, in, somebody in should that have said, language. Under the existing ordinance, we're going to raise it this, and that will stay in perpetuity, but if you want to raise it above that, above that, you have to come back. That would have been the layman's language that a guy like me could have understood. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rosendahl. Mr. Alicon. I call the question. Questions been called. We have Ms. Perry, Mr. Correct, and Mr. Garcetti on the queue. On calling the question, shall we open the roll? On calling the question. Open the roll, please. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. 11 eyes, 3 no's. The question's been called. Uh, we have a, Mr. Chair. Ms. Perry? We have a 245 before us. Uh, Mr. President, there are cards on this matter. A public hearing was not satisfied in committee this morning. Well, now we will. Uh, I don't have any cards on that. Oh, great. Okay. Oh, wait a second. 22? All right. I do have a couple. Uh, Dr. Williams? There's uh, four cards, colleagues. Four cards. ECAF. Dr. Clyde Williams, uh, El Sereno, Northeast LA. As one board commissioner once said, how can I explain it to my people when I can't understand it myself? That was for the bill, just the bill, because nobody can understand it. Yes, ECAF is difficult. It wasn't difficult two years ago. It was for natural gas and eventually uh, the cost of transporting of coal, fuel related, and it was supposed to vary as those things went up. It's ministerial. Now they've added so many other things to it that it effectively becomes a rate increase in perpetuity. These are caps. They are not the rate. So once you raise the cap, you allow each quarter the rate to increase without any discretionary action on the part of the Board of Water and Power, nor this council. So I wonder how the 245 can apply to simple regulatory man ministerial actions on the part of our dear management of DWP. So I'm quite concerned about the new man on the block who, hey, he has a profit motive. Let's make DWP even more profitable so that you can get more money back to the city council. So I would highly recommend that you go back to what ECAF was two years ago and make up the Board of Water and Power to actually establish rates for turbines, rates for solar, rates for coal replacement, each individually separated so that we can see where we're going and how much it's going to cost us, not necessarily this year, but how about in 2015, 2020. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Williams. Uh, Donna Pearman in Van Nuys is next. Arnold Sachs will be next here in Council Chambers. Pearman seems to have left. Oh, there, no, 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 come no, on forward. No. Don't worry. We see you. We see you. Don't slow down. Okay. Sorry. I was on the phone. Anyway, we can't afford these DWP rates like we can't afford bus hikes. The public is having a lot of problems making ends meet, especially when you ask for sacrifice from city employees, except uh, except not DWP, which you got their raise. You want another DWP? DWP hike, when we had one recently, hits the middle class the most. You find ways to help the lower class and the people in apartments, but middle class gets hit extra hard. The city council apparently loves spending their money for their legacy, green projects. We don't get to see what we were paying. How will it help us specifically? When will it be enough? How do I know you want... Uh, you won't ask for more if it costs more than you think. Why doesn't the CRA Sustainable cover any of this? It's not right. 
like it's not right to have huge in increases in metro passes with MTA so broke. We can't afford to pay more for Garcetti's legacy. This is wrong to be asking for, people are having lots of problems right now paying uh, when they have, um, when they have furloughs, when they're losing money already, when they don't get their cost of living, and now you're asking for more money, huge increases in the DWP. This will hurt families. This will hurt um, people uh, being able to live uh, a life simply. So um, I don't see that we can afford these green prices. We don't even know what we're paying for. Nowhere does it say what exactly is the green project, what exactly, how is it going to help us. They're trying to hide it from us so we don't know exactly what they have planned except whatever they have planned and we have to pay for it, which I think is wrong. So I say no. Let's vote on, no on this. Thank you. Thank you. Arnold Sachs is our next speaker. Is Mr. Sachs with us still? Seems to have left. John Walsh is next. Under W. City Attorney is now my favorite person in the whole world. Let me tell you, one blogger recently said, John Walsh, Hollywood Highlands org, that John Walsh is the conscience of L.A. That shows you how screwed up the city is. <laughs> okay, let's start with what really happened. You're not going to find the L.A. Times. You trusted the mayor. You trust the city council. You're the good guys. You trusted the mayor. The mayor lied to you. You look like fools. Now, he's done that to you 50, 60 times. Shame on you, not shame on the mayor. Is it the surprise to every taxpayer? First it's temporary, then now it's, it's permanent. You were scammed by the mayor. You were screwed by the mayor. Now, the answer is not recallcitycouncil.org. The answer is recallcityhall.org. I want you all to sign the recall petition. That's the way we can solve this problem. It is bloody unfair what he's doing. Metaphorically speaking, the city of Los Angeles is bleeding from a bodily orifice. Guess which orifice? The city ratepayers cannot sit for this. That should give you a hint on what bodily orifice the mayor attacked us on. I'm asking us to get together and get the mayor has already been offered an ambassadorship by Obama if he wants to walk out. Everybody knows he's been offered an ambassadorship. HollywoodHighlands.org. If you want to find out what Sam Zell won't tell you, you come to our, our, our website. Thank you. Vote Stand no. Up. We don't want to bleed. We Thank cannot you. afford this rate hike. And I love the city council. Daniel Weisman is our next speaker. Thank you for the consideration, Mr. Can you speak a little closer to the microphone so we can hear you? Thank you. Yeah, okay. Three W's in a row, huh? Okay. You're very lucky this morning. DWP has been doing this to us over and over again. There's nothing wrong with improving the services that DWP can uh, offer us. There's nothing wrong with trying to make this city green. There is something wrong with the way we've been presented with this information over and over again. Measure B, uh, the base rate increase that we looked at several years ago. All of these came to us without adequate justification. What's the matter? Is truth something the DWP can't afford to spend? We've been fooled over and over again. 0 0.5 raise in ECAF for the quarter starting July 1st could be another 0 0.5 in September 1st and another 0 0.5 in January 1st. And those of you who are mathematically challenged, trust me, exponential increases in anything is a very fast-moving product. Maybe the DWP does need it. They should tell us why and how. I'm with you, Mr. Rosendahl. I can't believe you're quite as dumb as you pretend to be. I think you have a good idea. I think it's important that we make this clear, as clear as we possibly can to all of our colleagues. And you know that many of us who come to this microphone will do our best to do so as well. Please make it clear for us how you feel on these issues. Thank you. 
that will uh, close our public comment on this. We have, Mr. Clerk, we have motions before us. We go usually in reverse order. The clerk said they had been circulated, Ms. Perry. Yeah. So as such, they've been introduced. We'd go with B first, which would be the 245 piece. Yes. And then, okay. Yes. All right. And so. I, I ask for an I vote on the 245. Okay. Is everybody clear what they're voting on? This is to assert jurisdiction? And, yes. Uh, item number 22 simply asks for a report by I assume we're going to know and file that item and vote on A and B. Is that? No, these are amendments to that, so we would be able to. We go through B. That would either pass or not. Um, if it doesn't pass, we go to A. Um, then as such, that would be attached to 22, and it would go forward. We take a final vote on that as amended or as not amended. Okay, you're treating them as amendments to that. Right. Okay, and you're taking okay. B up first. Yeah, reverse okay. order in the order they're introduced. Okay? Okay. Um, Please open the roll. Everybody got their votes in? This is to, a yes vote is to assert jurisdiction, a no vote is to reject. Okay? Please open, sorry, open the roll. Close the roll and tabulate the vote. Nine eyes, five no's. Okay, that does not move forward. Next we have 22A. Please open the roll as amended. Close the roll and tabulate the vote. 14 eyes. And then as amended, we have item 22 before us. Please open the roll. And Mr. President, that can be simply a note and file on okay. the committee report. All right. We'll go ahead and note and file if there's no objection to that. Okay. Next order of business, please. Mr. President, that takes care of the items in the special meeting. Do you wish to adjourn that and go back to the regular? Yes, please. Let's go back to the regular meeting. Council has motions for posting and referral. Those are posted and referred. There are excuses on the desk. Council Member Hahn, request be excused May 4th, 5th, 11th, 12th, 18th, 19th, 21st, 25th, 26th, June 1st, 2nd, and 4th for personal business. And that does meet council policy. All right. She is excused. Council Member LeBond, request be excused to leave at 11 a.m. on May 4th for city business. That meets council policy. All right. She is excused. Council Member Caress, request to be excused to arrive at 10.30 on May 19th and June 16th, both for city business, both meet council policy. He is excused. And Council Member Garcetti, request to be excused June 11th, 15th, 16th, 18th, 22nd, 23rd, and 25th for personal business that meets council policy. He is excused. Thank you. That clears the desk. Any announcements, colleagues? No, we'll begin our budget hearings uh, shortly. Uh, Mr. Parks will be with us shortly, and I think they'll start probably about 15 minutes after we finish today. That'll be about 1.30. We'll begin our budget hearings. Other announcements? Mr. Okay, none. Do we have any adjourning motions today? I can ask folks to please rise for our adjourning motions. Mr. Wieser for a first adjourning motion. Thank if I could ask everybody much. in the audience to please rise as well. Thank you very much, Mr. President. I know there's still some talking going on in the chambers. I'd ask that we uh, quiet down as we, we can um, ask our, our interviews and other things to please wait till after our adjourning motions. Thank you. Go ahead, Thank Mr. you very much. And colleagues, I'd ask that we adjourn today in honor of Ernest Maurice Stickney, who was better known as Brother by all who knew him and loved him in Boyle Heights. Brother was a longtime volunteer as a greeter at First Street Elementary School for children during nutrition and lunch. Brother Stickney was born on October 15, 1938 in Durham. Arkansas, two hours after his twin sister Eunice Marie. His parents were Tim Marie Hay Stickney. The family lived in Dermot for about five years after his birth before moving to Los Angeles in 1943. They settled in Boyle Heights area where brother lived until his passing. He attended First Street Elementary, Hollenbach Middle School, and Roosevelt High School. Brother also attended the Bible Institute of Los Angeles in downtown Los Angeles for a few years, enhancing his knowledge about the Bible. For many years, he attended Marshall Memorial Church of the Nazarene and participated in the Bible studies, camping trips, and other activities of this church together with his sister and friends from the neighborhood. Because of his disability, Brother, brother wasn't able to work, but he did not let that stop him from using his God-given gift of helping others. Because of his love and concern for children, he worked as a volunteer in the Neighborhood Head Start program. When that program 
recommended, brothers started an escort service walking children in the neighborhood to and from school. In some cases, he did this for three generations of children. Brother had a kind, gentle, and loving spirit, and all who knew him loved him. In June 2009, brother became ill and entered White Memorial Hospital, where he stayed as a patient until his passing on April 18, 2010. Brother and his family were thankful for the doctors, nurses, and all the other staff who brought him much comfort during his long stay at this facility. Brother was preceded in his death by his parents, Tom and Mark Stickney. He leaves behind his beloved twin sister, Eunice Longmire, a, devo a devoted brother-in-law, seven great nieces and nephews, great great nieces and nephews, the teachers and the students at First Street School Elementary. Those brother had, had, has escorted to and from school in the years past and many other relatives and friends who loved him. And colleagues, after his passing, I got a lot of calls from generations of young people who had attended First Street Elementary School. And certainly many of us could remember those kind persons that uh, played a significant role in our lives when we were young kids, making sure we were safe, greeting us, uh, helping us smile when we t went to and from school. And the Heights community certainly is going to miss him. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Labonge. Thank you very much. Uh, the great joy of life is meeting very great people. And a person that I met and knew and loved was John Carl Warnicke, a great architect from San Francisco. Met him with John Farrell in 1990 in Berlin. Uh, he uh, lived to be 91 years old. Most recently, last fall, I was able to give him one of those fine documents that the City Council gives out to salute him for his career. A great architect, he was John Kennedy's architect, and in fact designed the memorial for John Kennedy at Arlington. He also designed the State House in, uh, in Hawaii, in Honolulu, and our very own port building, among many things. He had a little retreat in Napa on the Russian River, uh, and he was a great guy. He played uh, football, tackle, uh, offensive tackle, so he was tight with John Farrell, who was a great All-American tackle. He played for Pop Warner at Stanford, was part of the Wild team that uh, was undefeated uh, by uh, their efforts uh, in 1939. But John Warnock, he was a visionary as an architect. Uh, he was a very great person to talk to. One time years ago, he came to Los Angeles, and he stayed in our home and slept on our couch and walked the neighborhood of Atwater Village, Mr. Garcetti, just to look at the architecture of the home. I ask we all adjourn in the memory of John Carl Warnock, who survived by his sister and three children, a great American. Thank you very much. Um, no, they're adjourning motions. We'll add Miss on to that as well. Uh, I ask that we adjourn today in memory of Lawrence L. Stamen. Uh, Larry was born July 10th, uh, 1928 in New Jersey and uh, moved out here and lived in Los Angeles for nearly 50 years where he was a commercial real estate developer and co-founder of Gilbert Dembo and Associates, now known as Dembo Realty. Uh, he enjoyed his life enormously, a devoted husband to his wife Sandy and a committed and loving father to Justine and great grandparent to Jack, Finn and Ben. He was a man who lived for and with a large band of close friends and became a devoted and active member of any community he was a part of. He was a man of the sea, active in sailing and enjoying the beach. He especially relished the camaraderie of the Sand and Sea Beach Club in Santa Monica and the Regency on Jensen Beach. He loved to read books and daily newspaper, play poker with friends, and had a deep interest in the markets and world events. He was very involved in the Benedict Canyon Association, Westlake School for Girls, the Brown University Parents Club. Uh, he moved to Florida in 1996 after 50 years here in Los Angeles, um, and he passed away on April 21st. He survived by his wife, Sandra Claren Goldring Stamen, uh, his daughter, Justine Stamen Ariaga, uh, son-in-law, John Ar Ariaga, and three grandsons, Jack, Finn, and Benjamin, all of Woodside, California. Uh, in lieu of flowers, please send contributions to the Teak Fellowship at teakfellowship.org. Memorial celebrations will be held here in Los Angeles and Florida at a later date, May. Larry Stamen, rest in peace. Are there no other adjourning motions? Yes, Mr. Zahn? Mr. Garcetti, I have a, a question regarding a, a point. Uh, Mr. Parks was not in chambers when we took that last vote. Yes. He is now in chambers. Could that matter be brought up before we conclude this council meeting? No, the meeting... The meeting is not adjourned yet. A special meeting or okay. part of a special meeting. Um, it would require somebody from the prevailing side, even if we were still in the special meeting, to move the reconsideration as well. Okay. okay. Um, if there's no other, the regular meeting, if you'll please call the roll. Uh, Mr. Parks, yeah. I, I just have an announcement that the uh, budget and finance will meet about 15 minutes after this meeting. But Dion, while all of us are here, could you explain to council members what the issues are in the protocol with seven members on the board? 
there's seven members on the there's seven members budget and finance now. If all seven are there, if an eighth member comes, that constitutes a quorum of the full body. So we would ask uh, council members to uh, look at that attendance carefully. If there's a if there's a missing council member, then you can be here. Otherwise, let's listen in on. If you, yeah, you can come and listen, but if you want to, you can't speak, and you can't sit at your chair or be a part of the. That, that is correct, Mr. Uh, Parks. Uh, an eighth council member cannot participate in the meeting. An eighth council member cannot participate in the meeting. They could observe it, uh, but cannot participate. That's Mr. correct. Mr. Gardner. Clarification from the city attorney that's eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth, one, you cannot go to eight or above, correct? That's correct. So if you walk in with four people, you couldn't think that because it's not exactly eight, you could speak. It's still eight or above, right? right? Uh, I mean, not even in public comment. If there's a majority of the full council present, uh, then the eighth or above council member could not even speak in public comment. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we'll please call the roll, Mr. Clerk. We'll next be in session at 10 a.m. tomorrow. That is Wednesday, uh, April 28th. In the meantime, have a good day.